It's the 16th of November, 2076, and the manager of Harper Supply sits down at his terminal to record a log on how business is booming. Sales at the shop have really picked up this month. A bunch of folks are buying up all sorts of camping gear, survival equipment, and canned goods. When I ask them what they're up to, they start talking about preparing for the end of civilization and the collapse of society. Sounds like crazy talk to me, but they're paying cash, so they can say whatever they like. Of course, it gets a bit scary when they buy cases of ammunition. I don't exactly feel comfortable knowing we've got these kooks living in the mountains sitting on that kind of firepower. Little did this humble shopkeeper know that within a year their entire world would be turned upside down, and those strange folks buying survival gear will have separated themselves from the country where they were born, and were perhaps best prepared to deal with the horrors to come. This is Fallout History, where we put you in the picture of some of Fallout's biggest events. This September, join the Free States movement during the countdown to the Great War. As 2076's winter turned to 2077's spring, tensions grew in Harper's Ferry between the townsfolk and their survivalist neighbors. On New Year's Day, police had to break up a fight between survivalists and patriots after complaints about government performance turned bloody, but this would not dissuade the survivalists. By May, survivalists could expect to be refused service at some local businesses, including the local medical clinic. As of May 23rd, this clinic no longer services the Carson family. This includes Caleb, Elizabeth, and their children, Madeline and Max. You can refer them to Morgantown, or to Charleston, but due to their constant involvement with the free states, our doors are closed to them. This hostility was not limited to the inhabitants of Harper's Ferry. By March the 20th of 2077, federal agents described as wearing fancy suits were asking questions around Harper's Ferry, demanding names and addresses. By June, this had grown to military involvement in putting up warning signs, seizing property, and making arrests of members of the movement, including founding member Raleigh Clay, on dubious grounds, although another Free States member, Senator Blackwell, would secure his release. This would lead to even more drastic events. In September 2077, the Free States members finally declared their independence from the United States, and Senator Blackwell issued his final warning to the people of Appalachia. The only recourse left to the average American is to flee population centers and head into the wilderness, where one can find at least some hope of escaping the lurid gaze of those in the government flying against us. In response, Senator Blackwell would be branded a traitor, and the mayor of Harper's Ferry would demand the members of this movement leave her town. She would live to regret this, however, as after the Great War, she returned, cap in hand, to Raleigh Clay in his bunker, begging for help from the well-prepared movement for her town. There, in Harper's Ferry, the movement would unite with other survivors and consolidate its power, at least until the scorched threat became too great. Although the free states would not survive the scorched plague, their symbols of independence and freedom would continue to stand proud in Appalachia, all because of their decision to secede from the United States in September 2077.